This video is going to be a look at Daryl Worley's impact, how he has filled in uh, for the Ravens defense in the past two weeks, specifically week three and week four. Now, we do know that he got hurt early in the week four game against the Browns. So for some to say he had an impact in that game might be a stretch, but he did have two big hits, one pass deflection uh, before he got hurt. I, I really think this video is a week late. I said this in a couple other videos. If I wanted to maximize exposure, I should have done this after he played 102 snaps against the Colts in week three. He did have seven tackles in that game while playing 90% of the snaps with Marcus Williams out. Um, he, he started against the Browns last week before suffering kind of like a random shoulder injury. He's a converted safety. For, th for those of you that don't know, began his career as a corner. Actually, he was drafted way back in like 2016, I believe. The Ravens had him move to safety prior to the season which was an interesting decision that a lot of us really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to, myself included, because, you know, we had Kyle Hamilton, we had Marcus Williams, Geno Stone had played well when he was filling in in 2022, so it was kind of like, you know, what do we need Daryl Worley for? Well, here we are early in the season. He's He played 90% of the snaps in Week 3 when we played a pretty good quality of defense, you know, absent four plays, I think, where we had some breakdowns. Worley is on his sixth NFL team, third season in Baltimore. He's a Philly guy. Originally, originally drafted in the third round in 2016, like I said. Uh, some Ravens fans may not be aware of the reference to COCAP. Um, others may think it's blasphemy, and that's no problem. But I think it's a reflection of how he plays the game. He's always competed since his first game suiting up for the Ravens, which was in Week 16 of 2021, which I'm going to show you one play from that game in a moment because – I remember talking about that. Of course, we got blown out that game, 41-21, had no chance. But I remember talking in a reaction video about how he competed with Jamar Chase, how he got hands on him, how he made things difficult on him. He flipped one of the tight ends on another tackle. Now, Burrow lit us up. Like, you know, it was that year, 2021, when he took advantage of, you know, some situations. Let's just put it that way. Um, but I noticed how Worley competed in the face of that. So that's where I'm going to start this video in a complimentary light, or I think so anyway, because of how competitive he was in this game, particularly in light of one of the comments uh, from someone in a video earlier this week talked about Worley being a, a classy guy in a situation when someone had wet, met him. It's, it may sound anecdotal, but I took it at face value. This is a, a DPI, excuse me, hold against Worley. Um, I think it's a slight hold. We'll just put it that way. Uh, it's 2021, Burrow and Chase are lighting up the league. Great story. I remember watching this. Look at It looked to me on this rep, it looked like a guy where he wanted the ball more than Jamar Chase did. And unfortunately for us as Ravens fans, uh, he got called for a hold. Let's um, check out the end zone angle. You will see him come off screen from the right to the left. Regardless, you know, whether it's a hold, whether it's not, I think it's somewhat of a weak call to be honest with you. If you look at this ref who's throwing the flag right now, for me to be petty, I guess I am here. Look where his head was a moment earlier. Talking about here and here. Now he's looking and catches the ever so slight hold at the end of it. Even if there was a hold, he catches the very end of it. Picks up his flag, throws it pretty quick. I was impressed by Worley's competitive, competitiveness on that day and his willingness to uh, stick his nose in there. Fast forward, 2022, week 18 again, late in the season. Uh, he also gave Chase and the Bengals everything they could ask for that day, playing outside corner. We were resting Marcus Peters. We're playing a drop, invert cover two here, if you ask me, and clearly the ball was underthrown. But that's a great recovery by Worley and challenge to knock the ball away from Chase. He made things difficult on the guy. Two years in a row when he faced him. And I, I took note of it, and I know other people did as well. And then when the Ravens decided to move him to safety, I was interested because I didn't think that coverage skills for an outside corner was his strength at this time. I'm sure that it was at some point. This is a cover two zone to his side again, still 2022. Great effort to just create a smaller window for Burrow on the cover two to his side. Burrow's already seen him sticking to chase, basically, you know, taking that away as an option. Burrow throws it over the top. Great challenge by Worley in terms of elevating, and then unbelievable hit by Chuck Clark to finish him off. Worley looks like a guy who fits right in with the Ravens mentality, if you ask me. And I felt that that was apparent and obvious 
in 2021 and then again in 2022. Covered Chase multiple times over the course of two seasons, like I said. And this game that we did lose, clearly, in Week 18 of 2022, but this game kind of continued to lay down the blueprint for limiting Burrow. Uh, In this game, he threw for 215 yards on 42 attempts. Whirly up top, you're going to get a bubble screen to Chase in the slot. I feel like the film speaks for itself. Obviously, I got to pick the plays. To, but I'm picking the plays as a representative sample of, of the point that I'm trying to make and how well I think he played in those situations. Now, there were opportunities to attack him, and I think this could be, and this is transitioning to 2023 film, because I think that I think that's the reason why the Ravens moved him to safety. There was opportunities to go at him outside. I think you got quarter, quarter, half here, and Burrow's looking to that side, and for whatever reason, on this little stutter go, chooses not to go up top to Higgins. We all know this as the strip sack by Ojabo. I mean, really, he didn't choose. He had pressure in his face, so that's a part of it. Last one from 2022. Gets beat on a little Z under. But I suspect the Ravens moved him to safety because of great effort, great energy, energy, great awareness, commitment to his reads, commitment to playing team defense, and it would potentially reduce his coverage area. So, 2023, moved to safety, played a lot of snaps in the preseason. We didn't expect to see him on the field at safety a whole lot for this team, not with all the talent we get out there, but Marcus Williams hurt, and Worley comes on and does a great job in week three, if you ask me. This coverage is one that we talked about in the preseason, where we're blitzing the boundary side inside linebacker, in this case, Queen, and dropping out the OLB to the other side. Sometimes it's cover three. Sometimes it's just man where we're rolling him down if the running back releases to the – too many lines on here. My apologies. If the running back releases to the flats, he's rolling and spinning down now because Queen is out of the equation. Queen has been blitzed. We do this another way, to be honest with you, but this is the one I want to talk about. We we saw it in the preseason many times. Ball's in the air. Worley's breaking. It's Zach Moss, who we had trouble tackling that day. Uh, Worley gets help from Roquan Smith and Jeremiah Moon gets a tackle. Short yardage situation, third and one. Not only does he get involved, not only does he get in there and, I mean, really, he he has a linebacker mentality at the safety position. He's always had that, I think, and I think the film from 2021-22 shows it. He did play a lot of snaps his first two years in Carolina after getting drafted as outside corner. I think he has five career interceptions, three in that first two years. Also, besides him bringing some thud on this play, he actually is involved with manipulating our defense, moving people around, telling them where they need to be. You can see to both sides of the field. To me, he seems to be someone that's responsible for others when he's on the field, getting people lined up, getting the call echoed, et cetera. This week's film against the Browns, finally. You know, my apologies that it took so long, but I I, I wanted to tell the story of Daryl Worley, even though he's a, uh, some people would call him a bit player. Or some people would say he's not a major character in this Ravens story. I disagree. I think that's the great thing about sports is you never know who the guys are or women that are going to play a role in their chosen sport and make an impact when someone else goes down. This is the uh, first possession. Like I said, only played nine snaps here. We're I think we're playing a quarters, and we got you know bunched to the side basically, so we're zoning it off a little bit. Worley's got no work from the backside single receiver who's running out. So he goes and he finds work front side and he lays the boom down on Peoples Jones. It's a great pass drop by Rukon Smith as well to get the deflection. Nearly intercepted. They were making fun of him. Saw that on Ravens wired. But Worley's committed. Worley's committed to laying hands on people, putting pads on people. He's in the right place. Safety seems like a good move. All right, second one, we've got a third down on the same possession. Worley will break late to Elijah Moore after the quarterback breaks contain here. This little out motion that everybody thinks is something new like they've never seen before. But in any case, quarterback, you know, yeah, maybe the quarterback could throw this ball a little sooner, but Worley breaks down and closes on this. I believe he gets uh, credit for a pass deflected or something. I'm not sure. I did see him with a statistical Entry for a pass deflection for last week, week four. He seems very aware back there. 
passing off routes. I think this looked like cover three to me. Passing off routes, pointing, communicating, pre-snap and post-snap. Last play that I'll show you. Watch him adjust. This is when he gets hurt, by the way. This is when he gets hurt. Um, and you may say it's inconsequential to in terms of him making a play on the ball or hitting anyone, but I think he's looking for either a vertical here first, and this route ends up actually passing over to Geno Stone. So then he finds work on the other side. He's a good safety, guys. He is. He's a good safety. And for being, you know, whatever number people want to apply to him in terms of our safeties, Hamilton, Williams, Stone, Worley, all of those guys, he's a great option to have on this team as someone who's willing to play special teams and very good at it. I almost showed some special teams film in this video, and I'm suspecting that a lot of people would not like to see special teams film because he played a demon of a game last year twice on special teams. I forget the games. And you can bring him in on defense if needed, and he can do a good job. He can be in the right place, help other people get lined up. And from, you know, again, perhaps anecdotal story that someone put in my comment section earlier this week appears to be a high-class dude. I wanted to show respect to someone like this. I believe the Ravens organization is is built with players like this and people like this. And I wanted to bring some respect and bring some light to, it, light to that situation, even if it was a week too late. I appreciate you guys' time. If you enjoyed the video, uh, perhaps you didn't like the title, CoCap version 1.2, and that's fine because Anthony Levine certainly you know, did a, a, a number of great things here, special teams, defense, filling in, kind of like I said, when other people were hurt. But if you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comment section. If you think I missed the mark here and focused too much on, um, on Daryl Worley, you know, please let me know because other guys clearly played a great game against the Browns. Worley only played nine snaps, but what he did the week before, when he played 102 snaps against the Colts, I think he, I think that was the most snaps played in any game by any player in the NFL that week. And I think that's pretty substantial. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it somewhere out on social media to help this content get more reach.